Uh, Future Watch. Uh, Mort Sider, right? Tell us yes. about that kid. Okay, so you know because we were talking about Capo, Caco, and Jack Hughes, there's another draft eligible player yep. in the World Championship, and that is Mort Sider, the defenseman for Germany. Uh, already has a goal in the tournament. Playing on a second pairing, getting you know some some good exposure here. I'm very intrigued by Sider because. You know, we haven't seen German prospects like him very often. We certainly haven't seen German prospects playing in the DEL in their draft year. You know, yeah. Leon Dreisaitl, uh, a more elite talent, you know, I'll say that right now. Uh, you know, he was playing in Prince Albert and then Kelowna in the WHL. So with Sider, you know, playing against men back home, uh, had some injuries this year, so he wasn't always available for scouts to see, but... Great size, great two-way blue liner. You know, there's a lot of upside there. Um, I'm very intrigued to see how high he goes in this draft because yeah. there isn't a consensus on who the best defenseman is in the draft. You know, Bowen Byram's the obvious uh, candidate, but then there's other people that say it might be Philip Broberg. Uh, they like the upside there. And then you have to think about guys like Sider and Thomas Harley and Victor Soderstrom. So I could see Sider going in the... 10 to 15 range yeah. if there's a run on defensemen or simply put if a if a team really likes what they see in him so he's still playing hockey with the germans so that's great he, for scouts. Uh, he drove the scouts nuts this year because they would come to see him and he wouldn't be in the lineup half the yeah. time but then he really turned it on like in the second half of the year and i think part of it was was when he went to the world junior mm -hmm. the uh, group two or b pool yeah, whatever division one and there. he dominated he yeah. dominated at that tournament, and and I think that was sort of where things turned around for yeah, him. Yeah, and they got promoted because of right, him, right. Uh, among other players. And what's really nice is that, so next year Germany will be at the real World Juniors, you know, quote unquote. But I, I actually think the Germans are going to be pretty good because they'll have Sider, they'll have Dominic German. Bach, the St. Louis Blues first rounder. they got a couple of other kids like Taro Jinch. They'll be available. So I don't think they're going to be pushovers. And for Sider, there's a chance for him, you know, once he's drafted, to play like 25 you know, maybe even more a game. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, as for drafted prospects, got to go with Nick Suzuki, the Montreal Canadiens prospect, acquired in the Max Pacioretty deal from Vegas. 42 points in 24 <laughs> games in the OHL playoffs. Ridiculous. Guelph had the most crazy run. You know, swept Kitchen in the first round. We're down three games to none to London. Came back. We're down three to one in game seven. Then won 6-3. They play Saginaw. Saginaw goes up 2 nothing, but their goalie gets suspended in the second game for the rest of the series for batting the puck into the crowd. Guelph comes back to win. Then in the final, they go down 2 nothing to Ottawa. Mikey DiPietro gets hurt for the 67s, so they have to put in their backup goaltender. Guelph ends up winning in six. I was at game four, Nick Suzuki playing on the line with Isaac Ratcliffe, the Flyers pick, and Mackenzie Entwistle, the Chicago Blackhawks prospect, and they were just dominating Ottawa's one of, they have, Ottawa had two top lines, uh, but the one with Ty Felhaber and Marco Rossi was the one that Suzuki was, was matched up against. They just dominated them. Um, I mean, the Suzuki line had the puck all the time when they were on the ice. Suzuki had three points that night. He also broke the Guelph Storm playoff record for scoring at the time. And then he just, you know, at the time the record was 35 from Martin St. Pierre. So he had 36 that night, finished the series, of, now it's 42 over the course of the playoffs. They're going to the Memorial Cup. And it's funny because they weren't the favorite going into the playoffs. But you look at the roster, it's like, wow, they're actually pretty deep there. It really came together. They loaded up too. They loaded up. Yeah, yeah. But they came together, and as many times as they were almost dead in the playoffs, they managed to get through. And now you're looking at a team that, you know, they only got to win a couple more games to win that Memorial Cup. I'm not saying they're the favorite, but Nick Suzuki is going to be a huge factor in that Memorial Cup tournament. Yep. Montreal Canadiens fans must be very happy 